being able to see your emotion as information or interpret your emotions as information uh, can be extremely helpful in life. Uh, and there is such a thing as making sure that you're accurately perceiving a situation and then your emotions will be more uh, hold more valuable information for you because you're accurately accurately perceiving what's going on. Um, having an awareness of what it means to be triggered is very important. Um, triggered is when you have some experience in the present that is reminding you of something in the past that was worse. And the triggering of that past event makes your um, brings up a really strong emotion and that emotion will be out of perspective with what's happening in the present. Um, but it's still a very valuable experience to have because it can help you, um, the present experience loosens up everything so that you can actually work through what happened in the past, um, which, is, which is great. That's what we want. So, so whenever you have an opportunity to work through something from the past, it's great to take those, opportunity, to take those opportunities, keep yourself calm, keep everything moving as slowly as you can so that you don't take any actions or do any behaviors that you're later going to feel bad about. Um, but give yourself time to digest what came up from the past and to be with those old feelings. So the challenge is being able to be with old emotions from the past is one thing. Then being with your emotions in the present with the insights or new understandings that you have about the past is something else. Being able to be with your emotions about how you felt in the past is something else. Um, there's all these different facets that you're, you know, you discover as you're practicing being with a feeling. Um, and then the other thing that's just super important is, uh, I call it, it's a kind of meditation practice called Metta. But um, the idea is to be is to practice loving kindness towards yourself, um, and of course you can do it towards other people. But uh, when you are working through emotions from the past, if you can send that past version of yourself loving kindness, um, and really really be with all those painful and uncomfortable and difficult feelings from that early age really be with those feelings in a loving way and connect to those feelings in a loving way, it feels really supportive and relaxing and it allows those feelings to ease their hold on you so that you don't feel like you're in the grip of them and that things will never change. So it's actually super powerful to be able to connect to younger versions of yourself or connect to a part of yourself from the past with that loving kindness energy and it's almost like it's like they call it reparenting yourself or um, being able to be your own internal parent. But there's this comforting that happens and a relief of the internal tension. So something important to know with psychosis is that, in general, the person was strained so emotionally that um, that that they their internal system had to work way, way in overdrive um, to try to maintain any kind of homo homeostasis. So anything you can do that's healthy for you to release that internal pressure, um, expressing emotions, creative therapies, artwork, music, dance, um, talking to someone, writing poetry, writing songs, listening to music, journaling, getting exercise, going out for a walk, taking a bath, um, like, all these different ways and coping strategies exist to help let the pressure off, to let the emotion flow out in a safe and manageable way. Um, when you're able to uh, tr find things that work for you, like find coping strategies that work for you, um, then when you get in touch with an old emotion from the past, um, one that you may have rep repressed or disconnected from, and it feels really big, um, it's just great to have those different strategies to fall back on, to give somewhere for that energy to go, um, and to, uh, to allow it to move out that way because it has somewhere to go. Um, one of the things that's really difficult is when we have these big buildups inside and we don't feel like we have anywhere for them to go. So being able to find ways to channel the energy 
um, is really helpful, uh, especially non-destructive ways to channel the energy. Because once you get this sense of mind-body connection, you get emotions that you become aware of, that they can flow back and forth, um, and you can understand what they are, and then you find ways to channel and express those emotions and put them into various containers of different types of artwork or different types of music or uh, different relationships where, you know, a therapist or a body worker or somewhere where you can communicate about what's going on with you. Um, then uh, meditation also, meditation groups are great. Uh, but so, so that you have somewhere for all that energy to go and then your system reorganizes itself. This is the most enjoyable feeling ever. When your system reorganizes itself, everything feels more flowing, more harmony, and there's more connection throughout the whole thing. Uh, and then you don't have these gaps, uh, these feelings of disconnect or dissociation or fragmentation or uh, feeling like you can't, um, you don't know yourself or you can't connect to yourself um, and so then you're always lost. You know, it feels so good when everything's connected through and then it just flows and you, you, you know where you are and you know, you know how you feel. Um, and then you can make decisions based on that real knowledge of yourself. Um, and then you have a chance to live a more satisfying, uh, enjoyable life where you feel content because you're meeting your needs because you know what they are and you can feel them. You know, it's so hard when you're out of touch with your emotions. Um, because you're constantly guessing at everything, trying to figure out what's going what's gonna to feel good for you. Um, and there are very good reasons for why people fall out of touch with their emotions, because they had to shut them off. They had to disconnect from them because they were too overwhelming. So it's, you know, it, it happens. Um, but the repair process is really worth it. It's worth the time that it takes. Um, it's worth the dedication and the intention. Um, and just like looking for the feelings, you know, uh, one other tip when, if you have a lot of hallucinations, if they're visual, audio, kinesthetic, um, uh, uh what else, uh, or smell, like any kind of hallucinations, look for the emotion that is under the hallucination and connect to the feeling in as supportive a way as you can so that you know, if you sense that there's some fear under the hallucination or that there's some anger under the hallucination or some shame, just connect to that feeling. Be there for that feeling. Meditate with it. Draw. Talk to someone. Listen to music. But be with that feeling and give that feeling some somewhere to go, some, some way to be released out through movement, tai chi. You know, it's great. But so, so being able to give that emotion somewhere to move then it has the space it needs to breathe and it supports mind-body connection and it gives you information about yourself. Um, and then, so then the body, the mind stops looking for these symbolic, uh, metaphorical uh, images or, you know, mental disturbances to try to get your attention to alert you to something going on within you. It, it doesn't need to resort to the hallucinations you know, because you building, you're building this connection with your actual emotions, which are much more direct information than hallucinations, which are like, you know, interpreting everything through looking at a, a piece of artwork and trying to figure out what it means. That's what a hallucination feels like to me. It's like trying to figure out what is this artwork telling me or what is this poem telling me or this piece of music telling me. Um, whereas if you feel your own emotions, you know, like you just know so much easier, um, so much faster and so much more direct how you feel or what you need to do. Um, you know, and, uh, but that, that process of reconnecting everything so that you have that direct access to your emotions, um, is really key. And, uh, yeah, just, uh, wanted to jump on here and put some videos together, offer this, I offer these ideas. My name is Eve Shalom. Uh, I have a website which is www.healingthroughmovement.squarespace.com. So there are no spaces anywhere in there. It's just all one long thing. So uh, feel free to look me up. And um, I hope that this video finds you well. Thank you.